Welcome to Beyond the Walls Late Edition. We're about to start. Remember, uh, this is a communion service. The communion blessings will be live. We invite you to participate. Please have the emblems ready at your location. Thank you. Please let us know that you're there. Say hi. Let us know where you're joining us from. Thank you for building community today. Greetings from Toronto Center Place and welcome to Beyond the Walls. I want to acknowledge your presence here today because you're not simply watching a video, you're building community with people from around the world. I invite you to mindfully share your ministry in the chat as we consider 
our theme today, where is your heart? Ask yourself the question, where is my heart? Donde esta mi corazón? Où est mon cœur? Of course, we don't mean your cardiovascular system, but your spirituality. We're talking about mind and soul. When we hear words like spirituality, mind, soul, we intuitively turn our attention inward. Yet, our scripture reminds us that we also need to look outward. In Community of Christ, we have nine enduring principles and five mission initiatives that we can use to begin to figure out where our heart is as we look around us. Are the values that we uphold and our commitment to building a better world for everyone reflected in our actions? Is it possible that our own fears and self-interest are influencing our decision-making when crucial times come? Envision this ideal that we call Zion, the kingdom of God on earth. Imagine a world of peace, justice, equal rights, and equal opportunity for all. Imagine humanity living in harmony with the rest of the planet, a sustainable way of living for all, everywhere. Let's use, for example, our enduring principle, sacredness of creation, to find our heart today. Are we good stewards of our planet? How do you feel about this topic? Where is your heart when you hear about record-breaking temperatures, rising sea levels, deforestation, and increasing number of wildfires and hurricanes? Yeah, I, I am aware that this is a politicized topic and there is disagreement. Maybe you think we need to take better care of our planet, but you don't know where to start. I often hear prophetic voices crying in the wilderness of our Facebook groups and our Zoom gatherings, calling us to make a more de definitive climate and social justice position as a church. And those who listen agree, but they say, what can I do? So when God made the covenant with Abraham, God said, be blameless. People's homes are destroyed by fire and flood. Drought leads to famine, war, and genocide. Our prayers and thoughts are with them. But are we blameless? Where is our heart? Isaiah 1.15 says, When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Of what use are our prayers if we are not willing to consider whether we are part of the problem? And if we are, have the courage to change. But we live in fear of what might happen if we change. For example, we love green energy, but we're afraid of inflation, thinking that it will eat up our savings, so we invest in oil companies. We know cattle farming is by far the most inefficient source of food and that it produces massive amounts of methane that trap heat in the atmosphere. But many of us eat beef almost in every meal. We buy items we don't need, we produce unnecessary waste, we ask for cheaper gas, more freeways. I confess, I'm not blameless, so what can I do? Isaiah 117 says, learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed. 
Start with a minor change. Set a realistic goal when you take communion today. Renew this commitment next time you take communion. Don't be surprised if you find your heart as you walk this path. Today our ministers are here to inspire us, joining us from places across North America and French Polynesia. They will explore ways in which we can find our heart while facing challenging personal circumstances. And when we hear the call to minister to those around us who are in need, as you listen to them, ask yourself the question, where is my heart? And we now go live to Charlotte, North Carolina, where Linda Franzese is here to offer our call to worship. Welcome, Linda. Thank you. Our call to worship today comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 4 through 7. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children, and talk about them when you are at home, and when you are away, when you lie down, and when you rise. Amen. 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 Thank you, Linda. And let us now sing together our opening hymn, Keep Your Lambs Trimmed and Burning. Keep your lamb trimmed and burning. Keep your lamb trimmed and burning. Keep your lamb trimmed and burning. For the work is nearly now go live to the Connor, Washington, where Susan Weber is here to offer our invocation today. Welcome, Susan. Welcome. Creator Spirit, we gather this morning reminding each other 
that we are always in your presence. That you await us as we rise and as we gather together. We open our eyes and our hearts to seek you, Jesus, the peaceful one, to dwell within us and through us as we experience this service together across the miles and time zones that exist on planet Earth. Help us to listen to each other as we pray and sing and focus on each other's words. We are a blessed community when we come together beyond the walls around the world as one. Help us to be as one. Help us to sing as one. Help us to pray as one. Thanks be to all who make us one each Sunday and through the week. We ask this simple prayer today for all the people who say in Jesus' name, may it be so. Amen. Nous nous rendons maintenant à Tahiti, en Polynésie française, où Punateniao est avec nous aujourd'hui pour offrir notre leçon de la paix. Bonjour Puna. Bonjour Leandro, et bon, bon dimanche à tous, et bonjour le monde. Pour notre leçon de paix, je vais vous partager mon vécu en tant que ministre pénitentiaire. C'est un ministère que j'apprécie particulièrement et cela fait un peu plus de 15 ans que je fais partie de ce groupe d'aumôniers de la communauté du Christ en Polynésie. En effet, nous rendons visite aux personnes incarcérées dans les deux maisons d'arrêt de tête, deux par deux, à tour de rôle et tous les samedis. Lorsque dans les médias, on entend qu'une personne fait des choses horribles, impensables, on lui souhaite tous les malheurs du monde. Et moi, j'y ai pensé. Mais quand c'est notre tour de visite, mon binôme et moi, et quand nous nous trouvons devant ces portes blindées, on oublie tout. Et moi en premier. L'esprit prend la place des appréhensions, des préjugés et change en compassion. Et lorsque nous traversons ce long couloir jusqu'à la salle de rencontre, ce lieu devient un espace sacré. L'esprit amplifie le sentiment de compassion. Et à ce moment-là, nous ne côtoyons plus les ennemis de la société. Il n'y a plus de criminels mais des pères de famille, des fils, des personnes en, en souffrance et contrées qui ont besoin de soutien et de réconfort. Tout être humain est né innocent et en évolution constante. Son devenir dépend de son milieu familial et en grandissant, il aura des connaissances qui changeront sa vie, bien ou en mal. Mais une personne ne peut être continuellement mauvaise, méchante ou violente, car c'est un être né innocent. Et là, à ce moment, nous côtoyons des personnes avec un cœur contrit. Et nous chantons ensemble, nous prions, et discutant ensemble du thème de la semaine. Et je vous assure que 
nous recevons beaucoup plus de ce partage. Alors que nous venons avec nos classes et nos questions-réponses toutes prêtes, nous sommes bénis par la profondeur de leurs propres réponses à nos questions. Et cela nous encourage davantage à continuer dans cette mission, la mission du Christ. Sœur Teresa Davila écrit « Christ n'a pas le corps, mais vous êtes son corps. Christ n'a pas de mains ni de pieds sur la terre, mais vous êtes ses mains et ses pieds. Vous êtes les yeux avec lesquels il regarde avec compassion le monde. Vous êtes les pieds avec lesquels il marche pour faire le bien. » Vous êtes les mains avec lesquelles il bénit le monde entier. Nous, la communauté du Christ, avons résumé ces paroles en une seule et belle phrase. La mission du Christ est notre mission. Prions. Dieu, Père d'amour et de paix, aide-nous à aimer ta paix et non la nôtre. Nous prions pour que l'amour du Christ continue à habiter en nos cœurs par la puissance de ton Esprit Saint, qu'il nous donne la force de triompher sur tout ce qui nous empêche de proclamer ta paix, qu'il crée la paix avec nous-mêmes et avec les autres, dans notre quartier, dans notre ville et dans le monde, afin que nous devenions des artisans de paix selon ta volonté. Amen. Amen. Thank you to our ministers and thank you for building this community today. I would like to say hi out loud to all those who had said hi and where you're joining us from. I really love this segment so please bear with me. We have quite a few folks tonight. I want to say hello to uh, Mavis in Clive, Iowa and Karen in Coffeeville, I'm not sure where Coffeeville is. I forgot, you told me, but I forgot. And Nathan in Lando Lakes in Florida. And we have Gail in California. Welcome also to Laura in Ottawa. Welcome Rick and MJ in Canberra, Australia. And welcome Marnie, Marnie Fisher in Vancouver Island, one of our singers with us. Welcome Mimi in Topeka, Kansas. I heard that in Topeka, Kansas, um, congregation, you might be um, listening to our, uh, the, the ministry of our singers next week. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I want to see that again. Melanie, welcome. Melanie Keeling, that's on YouTube. And welcome Eunice in Beamsville, uh, Ontario. Uh, already says Eunice for communion. Remember communion like this will be live today. If you want to participate, have your emblems ready. Welcome Barbara in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Welcome Wednesday, Jones in Columbia, South Carolina. Welcome Lilith. Welcome back in Finland. Welcome Jackie and David Mueller, two of our singers, uh, with the Beyond the Walls Choir in Tallahassee, Florida. Welcome Rain in New Mexico. Welcome uh, Leon in Florianopolis. I thought you were with us this morning, Leon, so welcome back. And welcome Felix uh, in Gibraltar. Uh, and we also pray for that, and we are working for that uh, mission, uh, Felix. So we, we're glad you're here. As I see a few more folks on Facebook. Uh, welcome Joel, another one of our singers. And Linda, one of our ministers who was with us this morning, is now with us. Uh, online on Facebook. So welcome everyone. If you haven't said hi, please do so. We're building community this way, this emerging community that we have in the late edition. So for, for that ministry and for sharing this video, I want to thank you. I want to... Oh, je vous remercie et te doy las gracias por eso. And now we go live to Fort Lauderdale in Florida, where Heidi Hazen Ramirez on vacation, but here with us 
to offer her testimony. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you, Leandro. Good morning, Beyond the Walls. Morgan Harper Nichols, a Christian musician and writer said, going through things you never thought you'd go through will only take you places you never thought you'd get to. I inherited ideas and a belief system from my Mormon pioneer ancestors. These beliefs were passed down from one generation to the next. These beliefs started crumbling and failing. Through a series of events, I experienced a dark night of the soul. I felt abandoned, alone, anxious, and scared. My temporary fix to calm the storm was to try to be a change maker from within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I believed that if I bore my testimony enough, prayed enough, studied the scriptures enough, was obedient enough, ministered to others enough, spoke up and spoke out for the marginalized enough, and had enough faith, everything would be all right. I stayed because it was too painful to leave. I ultimately ended up leaving the church of my pioneer ancestors because it was too painful to stay. Ian Levinsant, a spiritual leader, declared, it takes a lot more courage to let something go than it does to hang on to it, trying to make it better. Letting go doesn't mean ignoring a situation. Letting go means accepting what is exactly as it is without fear, resistance, or a struggle for control. I began speaking to anyone and everyone who would listen to me. After a particularly raw yet tender conversation with a dear friend, she texted me later that day. She told me she felt very strongly that God needed me to know three things. Number one, the pleadings of my heart are heard. Number two, I am understood. Number three, I am needed in a capacity that I don't yet understand. This was a turning point for me and the beginning of my journey to truly let go and let God. In August, 2021, I joined Beyond the Walls via Facebook for the first time. After an opening hymn, prayer and message, Leandro started greeting people from around the world. I hurried and logged off. I didn't want anyone to see that I was watching an online worship service. You see, I had absolutely no intention of ever, affiliated with a, uh, ever affiliating with an organized religious institution again and didn't want anyone to know that I was opening my heart and mind to other possibilities. The following week, I stayed logged in for the entire worship service. I have been a Beyond the Walls attendee ever since. A couple of weeks ago, I was able to make a religious and spiritual pilgrimage to Salt Lake City, Utah. July 24th commemorates the anniversary of the arrival of the Mormon pioneers into the Salt Lake Valley as Brigham Young, the prophet, proclaimed, this is the place. In honor of my pioneer ancestors who sacrificed everything they had to follow their hearts and their religious and spiritual path to the West, I also followed my heart and religious and spiritual path. On July 24th, 2022, I was baptized and confirmed a member of Community of Christ. I don't look at this experience as a washing away my sins or that I had lost the Holy Spirit and needed it confirmed upon me again. I look at this day as my spiritual rebirth into an affirming faith community that is Christ-centered. It was my way to formally declare Community of Christ is my place. I look forward to seeing what our gracious loving God has in store as I continue my faith journey with all of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Heidi, for this powerful testimony. And now we go to Michigan first to Lansing with Rong Wagner, who will offer our lectionary reading today. Welcome, Ron. Good day, Leandro. Uh, our, our lectionary reading comes from the book of Luke, chapters 12, verses 32 through 40. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. 
sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide the purses for yourself that will not wear out, the treasure in the heavens that will never fail, where no thief comes near or no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning like servants waiting for their master to return from the wedding of the banquet so that when he comes and knocks on, and knocks, they will immediately open the door for him. It will be good for these servants whose master finds them watching for when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve and will have them recline at the table, will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or towards daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house has had known when, what hour the thief com was coming, he would not have left the house be broken into. You must be ready because the son of man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Amen. Amen. And we stay in Michigan, but now go to Mount Pleasant. Well, Noel Kafka is here with us to offer today's sermon. Welcome, Noel. Thank you. Hello to you and hello to everyone near and far. It's amazing to be with you this day. Where is your heart? And the gospel speak out in ways that makes us fear for our security. Loss of control, loss of possessions, and loss of any understanding of what we thought we knew. Now it's amazing in just eight verses of our scripture, we have two powerful examples of what it means to build the kingdom and how to live out the message of Christ. Giving up of our treasures and giving alms and being ready for Christ to come like a thief in the night. Now we can agree that these are not new challenges brought to us in this passage of scripture. Now, in fact, these common themes repeat and repeat throughout the parables and teachings of Jesus to those who would listen. But in acknowledging our humanness, I offer you this challenge today. Invite your mind to stay open and to hear the message of Christ anew in these repeated themes. Now, too often our brain shuts down when we have been there, done that, or heard that before. Clear your mind of past understandings and invite the spirit to share afresh in this moment. Now, giving up of our treasures is an act of solidarity with the poor. But who are the poor? Jesus calls us to move away from a life in which only some people survive into one that parallels the vision of Zion. Now we are constantly invited to reflect on scripture passages that illustrates followers of Christ leaving 
everything behind to walk along the road with a complete stranger because he said, you come and follow me. And it's easy to imagine what that could look like in our minds if we did that very same thing because it's only make-believe. It looks good in our minds. We can Photoshop our face onto the faces of those written in our scriptures. But to actually be without is terrifying. When our sense of security is challenged, we don't like it. We fear it. It's ingrained within us. We must save money for the future. We must plan for a rainy day. We must be assured that our retirement is secure. And the idea of waking up the next day and seeing our life savings disappear is nauseating. But what if everything that we have worked for is gone? What then? Do we start back over and, and hope to get it all back again? Or do we pause and question, where is our heart? Well, I had the honor of briefly sharing here on Beyond the Walls during a lesson of the Living Church about the unexpected turn of events that caused my security to be challenged. Now, allow me to revisit that again this day. I was raised as my mother's only child in a home that could be defined as middle class. We weren't rich, we were not poor, and I did not have to want for anything. But I understood that any extras or specialty items came as a result of working for them and saving additional money. Now that became the model that I used in adulthood. We work for money and money buys what we want. Now it also buys what we need, but that expectation is already assumed. What we needed was a given, but what we wanted was the focal point. But in 2019, I made the decision to leave a life I had lived as an adult for 15 years and to start over in a life that celebrates who I authentically am. I started over with only a few belongings and no savings. I lived paycheck to paycheck, spending money solely on the essentials and the basic needs. And I will be honest to say that there were a few sleepless nights that was spent staring at the ceiling and wondering, what did I do? But I understood that the foundation of that question was in the security of my treasures and not in who I was or within my calling. And when the COVID-19 pandemic hit in 2020 and the lockdown began, my ability to survive paycheck to paycheck ceased. And what little security I had was gone. I quickly became that person counting out handfuls of pocket change 
in the grocery store checkout lane that I used to look upon with pity and compassion. And there were times the only reason I had food was due to the generosity of gifts. And you can bet I was filled with fear. But where was my heart? It was focused on how I was going to survive. But the gift of that lockdown was that I had a lot of time to talk with and to yell at God. But as that time slowly passed, and as I recognized my ability to survive, I found that I was talking less and listening more to God. I discovered a new sense of security and the gratitude that filled me as I acknowledged all that I already had. And in that I had never felt more rich. But in those times of listening, when I stopped fearing for my security, it was shared with me that I had needed to live that in order to claim the role as servant and to serve God's people. But beyond that, it was imperative that I lived this in order to understand the extreme systemic injustices when it comes to those in need. Now, before this experience, I could sympathize and found that my heart grew heavy when I thought of those in extreme need. But I could not fully understand the fear from a loss of control, security, and from the loss of an understanding of what I thought I knew. As those who claim to follow in the ways of Jesus, we must acknowledge that Christ calls us away from a world in which only some people survive due to the gifts shared by others into a world where the walls of injustice crumble at the feet of those meant to stand on the outside. When we reflect on our scripture and the reference of giving alms, we must understand that almsgiving is not just charitable acts and offerings to help others with less. To fully understand what it means to give to one another, we must create a world in which we share power and advantage with one another. This is what it means to build the kingdom. This is what it means to be communities of Christ. Now, the beauty of our diversity and acknowledging that all are called is accepting that we each have life experiences that invites us individually and collectively into a deeper sense of our discipleship and callings to be the hands and feet of Christ in our world. But we must choose to see it. I chose a life that started over with nothing not everybody has that choice. Not everybody has that privilege. I had no idea it was going to get worse for me. But I still made that choice. Now, in my own little world, depending on the gifts of others to survive, I acknowledge that not everyone's suffering 
was living the same experience. And while I now have the ability to slowly crawl out of the cave that I was in, many are still waking each day in the darkness of their disadvantages and in the intense separation between those with treasures and those without. When we are able to fully live in solidarity with the poor, we can look at one another and see how we are no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, rich or poor. We will then know where our heart is. It will be clothed in Christ Jesus as described in Galatians chapter 3. Now, where is our heart when our callings become an inconvenience? Where is our heart when our selfish needs and wants do not line up with our calling to serve others as Christ? Now, as Jesus shifted in his parable to reflect on the homeowner returning to find his slaves vigilant in his absence, and of the description of the Son of Man coming at an unexpected hour, like a thief in the night, I found myself moved to tears. I thought about the numerous times I have been unexpectedly called upon to serve and I have found myself saying, I didn't see that one coming. I thought about the times it didn't match up to what I thought my calling should have been or how I was stunted in my response out of the fear I held over myself. The question wasn't, where is my heart, but instead, how in the world am I going to do that? How can I? But instead of responding to the call, I allowed myself to be overcome and all remained status quo. Now, as the preacher, it is easy to inspire and positively challenge others to go and to do. But I would be remorse if I did not spotlight how hard it is to live what is being preached. But in all of Christ's teachings, he set the example to live out his message. Nowhere within our scriptures can I find an entry that focuses on how nice something sounds. I mean, nowhere can I find anything that suggests that Jesus was sharing from the depths of his mind because he thought it would be a really good idea. Instead, what I can find are several moments when Jesus said, come, follow me, and do as I do. We must be a people of action. We must leave these times of being together and we must respond. And it is absolutely okay to acknowledge our fears and hesitations and to even admit that we have no idea where to start. 
but remember. Another part of our scriptures that is repeated over and over was shared at the start of our scripture today. Do not be afraid, little flock. The church cannot be fully built until we are able to honestly answer the question, where is your heart? What impeding loyalties and false priorities are interfering with our ability to give up our treasures? What fear is keeping us at a status quo level? Are we living authentically? The call to serve is never on our time. Breaking down the walls of injustice is not something we can continue to schedule for the near future. We definitely cannot wait until the Son of Man breaks into our homes like a thief in the night. As we look around our various communities, we must agree the call to respond is urgent. When the master returned to his home and found his slaves alert and still working, he tightened his belt and he served his slaves a meal. Christ has tightened his belt and serves us a meal this day. As we join together around the world, as we eat together, May we invite the Spirit of Christ to fill us and to remove the weight of those plaguing treasures off of our shoulders. We join together at a table with no division. We join together at a table without class structures. And we join together at a table where our securities have no merit. And we eat together at that table free from our fear. May God continue to give us strength in the times we feel we have none. And may Christ continue to call us away from a world that is built upon our treasures. And may the Holy Spirit fill us so richly that we know exactly where our heart is. Thank you, Noel. And let us now sing together our communion hymn, Blessed is the Body and the Soul.
Blessed is the rising from the dead. Touch the wounded places as we meet. Feel my hands, my side, my head, my feet. Touch me, Thomas, touch and doubt no more. I am Christ alive forevermore. Touch the wounded heart of God today. Feel the pulse within this bit of clay. Love redeemed my body and my soul. Thomas, feel the broken one made whole. Blessed is the heart that can receive. Blessed is the one who learns to breathe. Blessed are the ashes and the dust. Blessed is the one who learns to trust. En Comunidad de Cristo, la Cena del Señor o Comunión es un sacramento en el que recordamos la vida, la muerte y la presencia viva de Jesucristo. Through partaking of the emblems, we renew the covenant we made through baptism, reconcile and strengthen relationships, and commit ourselves to Christ's mission in the world. Others may have different or added understandings with their faith traditions, but we invite all who participate in the Lord's Supper to do so as an expression of the love and peace of Jesus Christ in whose name we worship today. All are welcome at Christ's table. If you are joining us live uh, we, and have your emblems prepared, we invite you to partake alongside um, disciples around the world. And if you are watching the service recorded, we ask that you wait to participate until you can be with us live. Eternal God, we ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who receive it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of your Son, and witness to you, O God, that they are willing to take upon them the name of your Son, and always remember him and keep the commandments which He has given them, that they may always have His Spirit to be with them. Amen. Eternal God, we ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who receive it, that they may drink in remembrance of the blood of your Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness to you, O God, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen.
Please go forth today with the words of counsel, canonized as section 163 of the Doctrine and Covenants, verse 10b. Do not turn away in pride, fear, or guilt from the one who seeks only the best for you and your loved ones. Come before your eternal Creator with open minds and hearts and discover the blessings of the Gospel anew. Be vulnerable to divine grace. Amen. And please stay with us. After the service, we will have a chat with our ministers. I would like to see you there. <music>